Hi guys, so today I'm going to respite, respite? Hi guys, so today I'm going to um, give you a speech that I wrote English um, this year. I just did it today. Um, we had to pick a topic, um, a controversial issue that's happening in our society at the moment, and then speak about our opinion on it and um, as a persuasive speech. Um, so I did the legalisation of same-sex marriage in Australia, and I have it on my phone. So I'm going to read it for you. <clears throat> it's been stated that LBGTQ plus people are up to six times more likely to attempt suicide than heterosexuals. The Australian Bureau of Statistics um, shows that homosexual and bisexual people have far higher levels of anxiety, um, disorders in their heterosexual counterparts, 31% compared with 14%, and more than triple the rate of depression and related disorders, 19% compared with 6%. Young people who are not confident about their sexuality may engage in risk-taking or self-destructive behaviours such as drug use, self-harm or social withdrawal. So with that in mind, I'm going to tell you why it is so important to have legalisation of same-sex marriage. There have been debates on the legalisation of same-sex marriage and marriage equality happening for many years. Over the past 14 years, the acceptance of marriage equality has grown, and more recently there has been a large amount of media attention on the topic of legalising marriage equality here in Australia. This happened after Ireland and America uh, both legalised it nationwide, leaving Australia as the only English-speaking country without same-sex marriage. There are many arguments against marriage equality, from things like belief, as well as ignorance on the topic. As I said before, Australia is now the only English-speaking country um, that has not legalised marriage equality. The first country to legalise marriage equality was the Netherlands in 2001. The fact that some countries, like South Africa, who have serious issues like starvation and extreme poverty, have seen that the gender of someone is not what defines marriage, and have addressed the issue where we have not, really puts a perspective on it. People are fighting for Australia to leave the decision to a conscious vote, especially after Ireland led the way. There has also been a second push after the United States legalised marriage equality in all 50 states. The main argument against marriage equality is religion, and I don't want to beat up religion because it has its place and it does a lot of good in the world, but the problem with religion comes in when you have extremists who take it into their own hands to spread God's message. And God's message is not hate, it is love and acceptance. And people justify their discomfort by saying it, that it is their opinion and that it should be respected. And yes, that is true, but when your opinion hurts or dehumanises another person, it's discrimination. There is a great quote by Denise Froman from her piece of poetry called Dear Straight People that says, Dear straight bullies, you're right, we don't have the same values. You kill everything that's different. I preserve it. Did you notice that hate is still alive in and well in too many lunchrooms, taught in the silence of too many teachers? To me, this is very powerful. Some people claim that people push homosexuality onto others and that the gay agenda is harmful. You know what's harmful? Teaching your kids that they don't deserve the same rights as others because of who they love. Teaching kids that it isn't an issue for them to worry about. Because these kids are going to grow up and run this world. And if these hateful and hurtful, outdated ideas are passed down, we might as well just go back to being cavemen. How does a species survive? It evolves. And this is the evolution of thinking. Another claim is the preservation of the sanctity of marriage. And I ask you, what sanctity? People get married to inanimate objects. Well, marriage is to reproduce. Not every couple that gets married can or wants to have kids. Marriage is about love. Love between two people who want to share that love with their friends and their family. It is a commitment and a promise. To always be there for someone. To love them at both their best and their worst. I've never been that into marriage equality. Into, I've, I have been into marriage equality. Let me say that line again. I've never been that into marriage, and I guess it's because I've never really seen the point. 
but that doesn't mean that I have the right to take away someone else's marriage. Whether you're straight or gay, it doesn't matter. You are lucky. If you want to get married, you're free to do so. You could be drunk or on a dare, and some people who have been loving, committed relationships for years and years can't get married and can't adopt children. They say that everybody has the same rights, so who needs a marriage? We do not have the same rights. A. And B. How about we take away your marriage? You have the same rights in a civil partnership or de facto relationship, so who cares, right? Imagine growing up in a world where you are not allowed to be yourself. Imagine hating every part of yourself and not knowing why you are different or wrong. Because there is nothing wrong with homosexuality and the only reason that it is considered different is because of society. Throughout history, you hear of homosexuality quite regularly. In Europe, many rulers and powerful men were known to have male lovers. It was only in 390 AD that it was outlawed. When it comes to homophobia, there is a double standard. Women are allowed to be over-sexualized by men, but a man looks at another man in a sexual way and it's considered inappropriate because of fear. I always used to laugh at the fact that it's called homophobia because phobia means fear, and I've never seen a homophobe run away screaming because they happened to cross a homosexual like I do when I see a spider. But the more I think about it, phobia is the right word. It's a fear of being victimised, a fear of being considered weak, a fear that the harm they dish out could be turned on to them. When you see your parents talking about why they don't want their kids to be gay, it's often because they'll get bullied or it's a sin, and neither of those arguments are valid. If you taught your kid to accept everyone, no one would be bullied. By being afraid of your kid being picked on for something so stupid, you are part of the problem. We also hear about people claiming that same-sex marriage is harmful for the children that they will adopt, that having only one sex of parent can cause trauma later in life. That is simply not true. You hear of so many mothers and fathers bringing up children on their own. The Australian Bureau of Statistics claims that there are 6,000... 961,000 single-parent families, making up about 15% of all Australian families. Because of many reasons, children can grow up without both or one of their parents. You're saying that you would rather see a child starve to death in the streets or be mistreated in a foster home than in a loving environment where they are properly cared for? Having two dads or two mums is better than none. A child can grow up perfectly f happy with a single parent, so what difference will it make if the child has two parents of the same gender? There are many boundaries within uh, there are many boundaries with adoption in Victoria that can leave children vulnerable without the certainty of two parents simply because same-sex couples can't adopt. There are hundreds of children living in rainbow families across Australia who will positively benefit. Being able to adopt as well as having legal recognition of same-sex couples will ensure that all Australian families can have legal support when it comes to illness and other emergencies. For some, it's impossible to sit by their soulmate's side as they die because they aren't family. Imagine knowing your child or lifelong partner is in danger and not being able to help. How is that better for a child? How is that better for anyone? <clears throat> um... So that was my speech. Um, I'll put a annotation um, for the po uh, the ex for the video um, that I got one of my quotes from um, the Dear Straight People. Um, it's really really good and very funny if you watch it. Um, so I hope that gave you an idea about. Um, Marriage equality, what's happening with marriage equality here in Australia. Um, they recently just denied the bill. Um, our Prime Minister Tony Abbott recently, last night I think, said that he will not leave, uh, not let people in Parliament vote freely um, and that you have to vote with your party. So that means that it won't be passed. Um, but in good news, our opposition leader, uh, Bill Shorten, has said that within 100 days, if he's elected next election, which I think he will be, 
uh, within a hundred days of his election, he will um, legalize same-sex marriage. So, although that might be a little while away, it is at least coming. Um, yeah. So, I was just, I was really proud of that piece. I don't know why. Um, and it's a topic that I feel really strongly about and I thought, why not share it with as many people as possible? And I know there's probably not very many people watching this, but that's okay. At least there's a couple of people. So, with no further ado, I shall leave you. I'm sure this is going to be long enough as it is. Um, please like and subscribe if you feel like it. And comment. Um, maybe have a discussion down below what your views on same-sex marriage are. Um, if you say something stupid and derogatory and bigotry, I will not respond. Um, but if you have any valuable insights or any questions that you want to ask me, feel free to do so below and I will answer to the best of my knowledge. Okay. Um, see you guys when I see you. Bye.